The attraction of commodities has always been that they diversify your portfolio. Commodities have a different risk reward profile to other assets and what I mean by that is that they perform differently at different stages of the economic cycle. There's a lot of evidence to show that commodities are, are a particularly good hedge of inflation. So commodities tend to outperform other asset classes when you're heading into a period maybe of slowing growth and rising inflation pressures, which a lot of people think is where we're, is where we're going in the world, unfortunately. So I think you know, that, that's, that's, that, for me, is a very good argument for having commodities in your portfolio. But I think also, you know, if you look at the, the long-term demand trends, what's coming through from the emerging markets, then we're certainly going to see much higher demand for commodities over the long term than we've seen in the past. That sets a very positive kind of baseline, if you like. Mm -hmm. And then at the same time, a lot of the supply constraints that we became familiar with in sort of the, you know, the middle of the last decade are becoming apparent again in oil, in copper, in some agricultural commodities markets as well. Certainly, you know, I think to the extent that um, you know, they are starting to have an effect on the global economy in terms of inflation pressures, for example. So I mean, I think you know, for us, commodities is one of the themes that's going to be right at the forefront of, 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 of asset allocation and financial markets for quite a long time to come. So I think it's, be, it's, it's important for investors to have a view on commodities and to have some form of direct exposure to commodities as well. In terms of what we do, we, we look at the fundamentals of supply and demand and we try and work out which commodities uh, you know, have the potential for uh, significant price appreciation or whether fundamentals are the tightest and the markets that we think uh, fit into that sort of category are copper, um, where you know, we do expect China to come back and buy a lot in the second half of the year, and where the supply side is actually very tight. Oil, where again, supply side is tight, and even though we've got high prices, they don't think there's too much sign of demand destruction just yet. Um, we also like gold, uh, partly as a sort of inflation hedge, but I think more as a sort of uncertainty hedge, if you like, you know, concerns about financial stability, particularly at the moment. Um, we certainly see a bit more upward price, uh, price appreciation there. And then and corn, I think, is the other market where we, we see things looking particularly tight. The global corn market has been hit by very bad weather over the last couple of years. Stocks are low. And it, it does look like harvest expectations are continuing to be revised down this year as well because of potentially bad weather in the US. Um, China's starting to play a bit more of a role in the global corn market. And it does look as if there'll be some upward price pressures there too. We certainly don't think we've heard the last of food price inflation, that's for sure.